Welcome back to Telstra Stadium. Half time with Carlton in control of this match, leading 69 to 25. The major goal scorers Bolton, Orland, and Schneider. Bolton with a nine pointer for Sydney. Favola's got three. Morell's got two, including one of those nine pointers. And then Camberelli, French, Hullahan, Hume, and Stevens all sharing the goals. And it's been a pretty impressive performance so far by Carlton Peter. Uh, just what the doctor ordered for Dennis Pagan, and no real surprises given the uh, the inexperience of the Sydney side that started. And I don't think any surprise on who's best on ground at the present time too many. When you see Stevens getting around 16, 15 or 16 positions so far in the first half, he has just been fantastic. But the impressive part about him is the way he's been using the football. Well, they did use the football very well as we take a look at the first uh, past first half highlights. They got the ball into their forward line pretty well, some skillful play. Yes, yeah, certainly was. And look, that's been the success of their side so far. They've used the, the football very well into their forward 50 and really has shown that on the scoreboard. Favola has been you know, very, very good in the first quarter. Died about it in the second, has been taken out of the play, but they've had plenty of options. Very, very strong overheads this boy. It's been interesting to see the, the setup with Morell and Favola. They, they tend to go towards, uh, towards Favola, but Morell's popped up with a couple of goals as well. It's a two-pronged attack, a different style of play. It certainly is. I mean, Digby Morell, just very, very honest sort of player, and you can rely on, I think, his teammanship. That's a great part about the way Digby plays the game. Brendan Favola, three goals in that first half, as I mentioned, probably could have had four or five. He's missed a couple. Uh, he's in for another big season, I think. Oh, look, there's no doubt about that. And there is, here's his vocal point. Barry Hall came on for Sydney and gave them a little bit. They started to straighten, straighten them up. But Carlton worked very, very well in their back half as they've been getting two and three players back and screwing it off, making it very hard to Sydney to go in. We've seen Hullahan go forward. We've seen Prendergast up there taking a courageous mark. Had a nice hit to find Digby Morrell. Yeah, again, just using the football so well, man, when they're going into the forward 50. So when you look at the uh, the stats on the on the board, really not having a lot more of the football, Carlton, but just using the football so much better. You mentioned Nick Stevens, Peter. I mean, uh, he did have Brett Kirk there for a while, the best tagger in the business. Mm. Hasn't stopped him. Gee, if Carlton fans watching around the country, how do we end up with this guy? How oh, is this? Oh, I think there'll be a particular uh, coach uh, sitting in uh, an area around Adelaide at the moment <laughs> thinking the same thing. A along with a, a lot of Port supporters be wondering why Nick Stevens is uh, not wearing the Port colours. Yes, he's been superb. Could have been he's been a little bit quiet. Uh, Stevens has done, uh, well, hasn't really needed him, have they? Stevens has been doing all the work. Yeah, that's right. Could have really hasn't had a great deal. You talk about people we haven't seen a lot. Of course, Lance Whitwell not even made an approach onto the field yet. We expect to see him in the second half. Yeah, it's a marvellous start for Nick Stevens, and uh, he's been uh, combining pretty well with Scott Camparelli at times in that first half. The match stats from the first half, Peter. Uh, Sydney got uh, back into the game, got some more possession towards the end, but it's been uh, pretty much one way for Carlton. Well, it certainly times. has. I mean, look at the handballs now. Uh, it's, you know, seven difference in there. 40 to Carlton, only 33. Uh, to uh, the, Well, the clearances has been the biggest area. Sydney really have dominated the ruck, but it's been the midfielders that have been reading it off the hands of Sydney players. Yes, they're in control at the moment, Carlton. They're new players to the club, been doing a good job. We'll take a break and come back with more after this. See the super boots kick the super gun. Here at Telstra Stadium, Carlton leading by 44 points. A very good start for the Blues with Favola, the leading goal scorer, on the ground with three. Morell has two. And for Sydney, Bolton, Hall and Schneider, each with singles. And uh, they'll be looking for a better half, up forward in particular, from the Sydney Swans. Well, the digital revolution is coming to all Foxtel subscribers. And that means a whole new world for Fox footy fans. Sports Active is an exciting new breakthrough that lets you watch football the way you want to. Now, on selected games each weekend, you'll be able to change every camera angle, change the audio, do whatever you want with your best friend, the remote control. It's as simple as pressing the big red button. As you via the main menu bar to choose a range of options to enhance your live match coverage. Ever wanted to direct the action yourself? Well, soon you'll have a range of different camera angles to choose from at any given time. One of the great innovations will be the split screen. This will enable you to watch three different angles of the match as well as the highlights of the game so far. Press select on your remote control and that'll take you to the highlight screen, which enables you to watch all the match highlights and still keep an eye on the match in progress up in the top left corner. Now you can select the back button, that'll return you to the split screen and you can take your pick between any of the other camera angles. So let's pick hot shot. 
this camera can be used to focus on particular players, off the ball matchups and other action. Or you could select wide eye. This one's just like sitting back in the grandstand and taking it all in. If you like to keep up to date with who's doing what during the game, you can select from a huge range of live match statistics, all the stats and career information for every player involved in the match. What's he done today? What's he done this year? Simply navigate your way through the menus to find out. Team stats are also available, so you can do your own analysis as to where your side needs to lift or where they're comfortably on top. There's also a snapshot summary of the leading goal kickers and ball winners, so you can stay on top of the same information that the coaches are sifting through, all at the touch of a button on your sports active remote control. You can also get stats from other matches across the weekend, even if they're still in progress. Not to mention the AFL ladder, the race for the Coleman medal and the season leaders in all the major stats categories and it's all at your fingertips. And if you can change the camera angles to enhance your coverage, then why not have a choice of audio as well? Turn the umpire's mics on or off. You can even turn the commentary on or off with the option of Stadium FX so you can pump up the volume to give that feeling of being there live at the ground. And this facility is fantastic. With Fox Footy Sports Active, you'll never leave the match from start to finish because even during the quarter and three-quarter time breaks, you can keep an eye on the two huddles and even select your favourite team for a closer look. And it's all at your fingertips, courtesy of your Foxtel digital remote control. It's all about choice. The choice will be yours with Sports Active, which will be available at no additional charge to all Foxtel subscribers on the basic package once you've upgraded to the new digital service. Hi, I'm Anthony Hudson. And Welcome back to Telstra Stadium here in Sydney. The round one match between Carlton and the Sydney Swans. The second half is about to get underway. 44 points is the margin. My ball. And that was a quick whistle for the start Thanks, of the second half. Thanks, Nick. Straight out. Eyes up, guys. And again. Quick throw of the ball. Mickle John over the top. That's a good knock forward. Buchanan sliding to the ground. The tackle was lapping. Fosdyke did well. Hunt smothered. Darren Hume was the smotherer. Right? Good contest, guys. Let's go down to the boundary with Troy Love. The Swans were a little bit quiet at half time, but Ruse just said to the young blokes, keep your heads up and keep working at it. Ben Fixter, no longer going to be available. And Heath James, he did have no idea what happened to him, but he's actually walking around and OK. For Carlton, Dennis Pagan came off smiling, as he should be. Anthony Kudafidis doesn't look like he's going to take any more part in the game. And keep an eye on Nick Stevens. He also came off with what looked like an injured ankle. Right. Stevie Kennett going uh, over the boundary line. There's Kuda. The tracky pants on. Stevens out on the ground though. He's just uh, slight limp. Doesn't look too bad. Well, he's had it 15 times in the first half. He's been a star in his first official game for the Blues. Edge of the centre square. 19669 right Carlton. Go. Sydney 12425. They trail by 44 Sorry, points. Guys. Brendan Favola was uh, very good in that first half. He booted three goals. Two goals to Digby Morrell, including a nine pointer. No chance. No prior. Thanks, guys. So we've got a ball up on the edge of the centre square. Thanks, Kirky. Thanks, one. Carlton. Straight up, guys. Jumped out of the blocks in that first quarter, opened up a 27-point lead, led by 44 points at half-time. Wait. Somehow. Weaved his way out of trouble. Back to Lappin. Edge of the centre square to centre half forward. Here's Whitnell. Couldn't take it on the second grab. Boya goes in very hard. Loose ball. Mine. Thanks, guys. Watch it, Max. And Boya gets a there, shove in the back, skids along the ground, looks Good around tackle. in amazement. Thanks, no free kick. Heath Scotland Sorry. at the bottom of the pack. Up, guys. Straight at it. Prendergast in the ruck. Barnaby French taking a breather on the boundary line. Going to ground was Willoughby. Young man was looking for a free kick. Fosdyke somehow got boot to ball. Kirk with those quick hands, smothered off the boot that time from Maxfield, taken by Prendergast, didn't hit a target, clean hands, wonderful hands by Kirk, hammers the ball back, here's a chance, Robert Lewis Thompson running hard at the ball, runs into Teague, gets bowled out of the contest, taken away by Thornton, Bannister's caught, maybe the Swans are going up a cock, renowned for their tackling, goes short, looking again for Nick Stevens, stumped away that time, good defensive play by Micklejohn, and we've got a boundary throw in. Well, certainly lifted their rating, uh, Sydney, at the present time. You know, they're, they're just a lot harder at the ball than they were in the first half, so it's a good sign for them. 
Boundary throw in once again. He gets all the way to the centre circle, or the centre square, I should say. That's mine. Oh, the ball up. Good contest, guys. Barry Hall up forward. Daniel Hunt Straight also up, a key forward for the Sydney Swans. <laughs> Brett Kirk has started this second half. He's been everywhere. Boyer went without it. Willoughby didn't. Got the give out in time. It was a good one. Buchanan found himself in some space. Got a beautiful kick to Hall. Wonderful kick by Eamon oh, Buchanan. Just at the corner of his eye, just hooked it around on the That's right boot the and allowed They're Barry Hall to run onto it. Yep. Well, he's an imposing figure, nice. Barry Hall. Real presence for the Sydney Swans on the forward line. They do look for him every time they go forward, and why not? Kicked a goal in that second term. Fair bit of attention there from Brett Thornton, but he is very strong. From 40 metres, almost directly in front. It's not his best kick. That was well off to the right. Just couldn't get the drop right. So a disappointing miss. And probably, Peter, they, they deserve the goal for some of their hard work. And the way they use the football, man. We talk about how Carlton was doing. That's disappointing. Boyer comes away from half back. Didn't play football at all last year. Well, he died whilst overseas in an accident. Picked up by Dennis Pagan. Ball driven in, taken by Mickle John. Young man played just five games last year. Good size. Jason Ball will come back in the side. No Michael O'Loughlin today. No Leo Barry, Ty Canelli, Paul Williams, Jared Crouch. No Jude Bolton. No Nick Davis. So a lot of these Sydney stars that got him into the preliminary final last year. Not here today at Telstra Stadium. But a full team on the field from Carlton. There's Rogers. That's how you take a break for Barnaby French. James Lance, go to the footy. Resting on the Sharon. Boundary throw in. Whitnell doing the ruck work. And the crumbing to Camparelli. His partner in crime is Houlihan outside 50 for Vol as the target. Ken as the crummer. Got an unlucky bounce taken away by Shubal. Rockers the ball back, taken by Rogers. Pulled off the kick. Corey McGrath. He's come on the ground at half time. He started on the wing. Breaking left footer, finds Davis. Under pressure, good enough to get the kick away. Running with the flow of the ball was Whitnell. Taken by Jared Wade, wild handball. McVeigh trying to trap it, can't do so. Over the line for a toss back in. 196-69. Carlton the lead by 43 points, Sydney 1-2-5, 26. After leading by 27 points at quarter time, 44 points at half time for the Blues. Daniel Harford on screen. Prendergast doing the ruck work. Athletic. Injured last year. No it's always chance, looked guys. like he's had plenty of ability. Numbers. Started nice. playing at centre half nice back track. last year before Sorry, he was guys. injured. Taking his turn the ruck along with Barnaby French today. Against Micklejohn. Who wins the tap. Hume. Very good in traffic. Kirk dives on the ball. Mine. And a ball up on the edge of the nice, centre guys. square. Stand him up, guys. Well, nice, we've seen Kirky. a lot more scrimmages already in this. Uh, nice third Thanks, term yeah. straight up again guys good work players just not letting their opponents get free very much one on one footy at the moment Ablett with the ruck and Stevens yes it's finally over the boundary line once again that's fine guys good Close scoring start just the one behind so far in this term to Barry Hall hey, sir. same again guys arms up Mickle John and Prendergast, Mickle John punching it forward. Lappin waiting back, thrown to the ground, but got his kick away in time. This is McGrath, the give back, Bannister, Scotland. So three recruits combining there. Scotland looking for Vivola. Oh, that is good footy. That's smart footy, isn't it? That's it. And Shawbel's an experienced player. It's not as if he's playing on a junior there. I mean, Shawbel's been around for quite a while. He's the best and fairest when he's played 153 games. And Favola just read that perfectly. I don't think Shawbel really did read it at all, though, did he? I think he's a little bit out of a touch at the moment. Andrew Shawbel, outstanding form towards the end of last year. Really giving Favola an opportunity here. This for number four. Brendan Favola, straight through the middle. 
six off left. Wonderful start to his Wizard Cup campaign. Carlton fans will be hoping he carries that right through the home and away season. It looks as though he will. He's got four goals, three for the afternoon. Be pretty tough playing defence uh, today for the Sydney Swans because the ball is coming down so fast. A lot of good players for Carlton today. They've got, well, maybe nearly their best lineup out there on the field. It's pretty not, close. Not too many can be added to it. They've got all their recruits playing. And all leading from the front, KB, too. When you look at uh, you know, Stevens on 16 possessions, Scotland now going up to 12. You go. You've got other boys. Uh, well, of course, Clark was up to six until he's had a little bit of a spell on the bench. Luke Livingston probably out of defence, could uh, find his niche there in the last line of defence as Kirk comes away for Sydney, looking for big bad Barry. Couldn't quite take it. Goods was there as well. Barry, great pickup. Tries to just fend off his opponent, keeps the ball alive. Finally trickles over for a boundary throw in. So it's just a matter of getting the game plan right for Carlton today. Just going to the top five at the moment. You've got uh, Stevens now on 16, Scotland 12, Lappin on 11, Bolton now to 10, and Hume on 10. Barry Hall takes it out of the ruck, feeds the ball back to Kirk. Just experienced players. Hall goes to ground. Carlton with numbers. Thornton goes short. There's a good kick and finds Whitnell. He's across half back, kicks a high ball back. Hulahan was there, beaten uh, for the run for the ball. That's a great mark taken by Bolton. Terrific season for the Sydney Swans. Coming across from the Brisbane Lions. Taken by Bevan. Drills the ball. In short. Finds Sunquist. He's on centre wing. Just weighing up the options. Maybe time for think music. Sunquist decides to kick the ball long. Always to Hall. He's going to be a target. Outgunned this time. And Whitnell getting back. Should he play centre half forward or centre half back? That's the big question for the Blues. We'll probably find he'll play at both ends of the ground. Hume comes away from half back, drills it into Houlihan on the stretch. Running hard that time was Hume. He wanted it back. <laughs> Runs into his teammate and Corey McGrath. Might have to introduce himself. Half these guys don't know each other. <laughs> I think they're going OK, KB. <laughs> Prendergast was looking for the bowler. Well, I reckon uh, Barnaby French walked in last year and introduced himself, didn't know anyone, walked in this year and still didn't know anyone. <laughs> Shovel switches. Schneider. <laughs> to Schneider. He's got it now. That's fine, that's fine. Becoming an important player in only his second season. Lappin read it the best ahead of Sunquist and now high ball. Whitnell at this end of the ground now. Good spoil, though. Roving it with Scotland, just forcing it forward. Now Potter goes back, should give on the up, and he does. Shawble, that's a clever handball. Back to Bevan, they work it out. Schneider, he can go over the top, decides to go down the middle. Has to be clean, and it is. McVeigh. Digby. Well, you think he might have been off the line, but eventually he is. Saddington. Is that it, Nick? This is where they're just breaking down a little bit. Getting to half forward. Barry Hall's playing centre half forward at the moment. Going, Jace. Short pass, and there's Hall, who got a long way to get to centre wing to accept that pass. Not too many defenders can go with Barry Hall once he sprints. And he's very quick. Goods slides in and takes it. Does, does it all the time. A bit clever mark. I think he's going to hurt himself one day going down like that. You know, he just does this sliding with one knee. I can see something uh, going terribly wrong. That I'm good if he keeps doing that. Short to Bolton. That's the way Brownlow Middlers That's mark the ball, Peter. Yeah, yes, yes, I do. All the Brownlow Middlers do that sort of thing. You would know about that. <laughs> oh, you didn't win one either, KB. There we go. Oh, it's favourite 12 times. <laughs> Luke Cannon, as the former Tigers in the commentary box reminisce. And that's Lappin, who's having an excellent third quarter. Goes wide now. Favola is the target. Scotland may have gotten his way. But Cannon did pretty well then to beat two. Hume with the don't argue to Favola. Favola has kicked it out of bounds on the full. Not his best kick. And it'll be Aaron Rodgers to take the kick quickly for the Swans. What we call that haircut Brendan Favola's wearing, Peter? You're up with the latest fashions. Well, it's somewhere between a, a mullet and a messy mullet. I think it's uh, just a shambles. It's a matted mullet. It's a matted mullet. There we go. 
What sort of bait do you use to catch that? No, we won't go there. Boya. Out in front of Kenner. Oh, he's going to back himself here. And away he goes, the little fella. Hooks it round the corner. Wants Fisher. Good spoil. Still alive for Cullen. Harford went without it. Kurt. Down. Searching handball finds Bolton and the Swans are away. And they have lifted their rating. Looking for Willoughby. Does a 360 over the boundary line. Been a competitive little player so far, Willoughby. Yes, number one pick in the 2003 National Draft for Sydney. One boy from oh, South Australia ball. was an All-Australian under 18. Not a good sign. Big Barry Hall coming to the boundary line. Is he limping or is he just coming off for a break? Schneider had it, lost it. Fisher, touch of the fumbles. Kenner couldn't take it. Bevan, handball didn't hit a target. Fisher recovers well. Danger now for Sydney. Shawwell's got an ugly bounce. Hulhan got a beauty. Camberelli a better bounce. Kicks a goal. Well, you see Sydney doing all the right things, just not having a lot of luck. They're just uh, each turnover. Carlton just go into their forward line, and the luck is with them all day. Two goals to Scott Camperelli, one in the first quarter, now one in the third. It's a wonderful finish, isn't he? Doesn't miss many. Got criticised a lot last year, Scott Camperelli, which I thought was pretty harsh because he was virtually one man out. Didn't playing have a lot midfield. of help in the midfield, Ratton, did he? Ratton, you know, retired during yep. the course of the season as well. So sides were able to sit on him, and uh, that's why Barry Hall has come off. We couldn't see that from uh, our particular angle. But I thought, you know, Camperelli's been such a great player for Carlton. Right from his, uh, his opening season when he won the Norwich Rising Stars, I know him back then. He'll get a bit, bit more help this year from uh, Nick Stevens in yeah. Scotland. Mm. What's that, Scotty? Let's take a look at uh, Barry Hall, who, uh, as we saw, came off. And there's a clash of heads. What's well, using your head, really? I mean, Big Barry's, uh, that's not what you call a classic tackle. Mm. Well, he's going to uh, get that cleaned up and hopefully get back out into the fray as Buchanan tries to force it wide. It's going there. Harford was the man who was on the end of it, and he's breaking and bouncing. And still alive and still not sure. Kick towards Morell, getting back. And it's good to see players like Bevan. They're starting to get hold of the footy a bit. And getting used to it. Short pass out wide. Buchanan. Two metres, one. That's it there, Brendan. Play on. Backwards. Play on. Play on. Play on the call. You heard that in the Wizard Cup. It goes backwards. Unless it's in your forward 50. It is play on. And Bolton heads for the boundary. Let's go down to Troy Luff once again on the boundary. Yeah, Barry Hall's come off after that head clash. He's gone straight into the rooms to get some stitches in his nose. Come by 55 points, yes, to the back ahead of uh, Digby Morrell. We'll see it here. Comes back. And that would have hurt. That is just uh, pretty painful to watch. Oh, yes. All right. It's from the front. They call it Carlton. a Liverpool kiss, Where don't they? The footy. Just bumping him out of it. Go back, go back. Prendergast has got it. Edge of the centre square. Morell is on a lead. Chipping in his camper rally. Come around, Scotty. He's directly Come in front. Being picked three. up by Brett Kirk. Three Come round. You would expect him to get the distance. Camparelli has kicked two goals. He's also had it ten times. Just push out. Two one next to his name. Side side, Nick. Eighty-one plays, twenty-six. So the Blues by fifty-five points, just to extend it six up, six up. to sixty-one. Right on fifty, leans back, unloads. It's a big kick, big bomb. Did it squeeze through? It has. Three goals to Scott Camparelli. And the Blues continue to dominate. Just working overtime now. Scott Camperelli, when you, when you have a look at someone like Kirk, who's had eight possessions, probably now jumping up to 11, but has kicked three goals. Hasn't had his, uh, hasn't been his direct opponent all day, but really is starting to cover a lot of the ground. A little bit humid out there too. His fitness uh, level really looking pretty good at the moment. It's set for a really good year. And like you said, KB, pretty maligned, I think, last year, un unfairly. His work rate's always been very high. Got frustrated a couple of times last year, didn't he? Things weren't going well, they, Carlton's way, as we know. Couldn't win a game, and they've yeah. been belted by 100 points. Play on! It's frustrating, isn't it? 
It's very frustrating. <laughs> you should try coaching when that happens too. <laughs> Here he is again. He's gone the big top. Coming out Hallahan. Big clash. Ball spills to ground. Fisher keeps his feet and dribbles through another one. Well. Brad Fisher gets the goal. Camberley was involved as well. And how did that come about, Peter? I mean, it was just a bit of. Was it fortunate? Was it lucky? Or on the tissue last time I uh, they I just went, ran into each other the bowling. two swan players and just a little bit of 10 pin bowling here that's just lovely that's a strike yep. and uh, has just released it all beautifully really that's just uh, again more luck than uh, than skill but Carlton go ahead further but uh, they'd be happy to see that young boy just swooping on the ball. I know we say sometimes you can be lucky and a couple of players went down then but players run into contests all the time that's the sort of thing that can happen Oh, Dennis Pagan be happy with uh, Fisher. Play on, that's okay. Harford playing for a free kick. Not good, not Didn't good. quite get it. Kirk on hands and knees. Weaves out of line, trouble. Line. Gives it across line, to Potter. Line. Taken away by Maxfield. The skipper on the charge. Trying to drag it back. There's no Barry Hall down there. Smith takes it. Good hands. And running in and kicking a goal is Mickle John. All clear. So it was good to see that young boy Smith there on screen, the young blonde headed number 36 from West Adelaide, second pick for City in the draft. And he did win in the under 16s the Kevin Sheen medal for the best player at the Australian Championships, giving that ball across there to Mickle John. Just five games in his career last year. So a couple of youngsters combining and popping through a goal for the Swans. Yeah, good effort, second effort, keeping his eye on the football, staying involved. Really just jumps up for an easy goal to Sydney, but uh, again. Go. No, they're just going to keep pumping it forward and keep trying hard, Sydney. A couple of the teenagers combining there. Sydney have nine teenagers playing today. Incredible, really. Here's Whitnell. That's fine. Yep. Back to Prendergast off one step. Morrell came in from the side, couldn't quite get it. Saddington's under siege at the Pulled moment. Off Pulled off. Pulled off. Sunquest may have to con concede. The ball is in the way, Good just the behind. Not to be. Four goals, four now to Brendan Favola. So I reckon that passage of play there is what we'll see a lot with Carlton this year, where Favola, if he's pushing and shoving, someone like Digby Morrell then will come over, over the, the top, top, which he can do. He can take a good, strong mark like that. Whereas, whereas last year, if Favola couldn't get it himself, then obviously they didn't get it. Conversation between boundary and field umpire. They've worked it out. Just outside Carlton's 50. They lead by 62 points. A dominant display from the Blues in round one. Very pleasing for Dennis Pagan. Wouldn't be pleased with lack of communication there between Boya and Lappin. Boya goes back to have one another ball, dip at it. Thank you. We'll have another ball up. Thanks, Stu. Thanks, one. Straight up, guys. Barry Hall off the ground with... Straight at it. Damaged nose, getting some stitches at the moment. Taking away their key forward, Sunquist. Sydney go forward, but only as far as Teague. And he's standing in the way. Clown. Goes back. Floating across nicely, Saddington. Such an important player at the Swans. Yep. Up the middle, Ablett. Well, 50. He'll take 50, and he's on, on song for nine. Just came in. Well, you think with the name came of that, he should kick a goal. Protected area, Nick. Be a soda. Yeah, pretty unlucky, I think, for Brad Fisher there. He really yep, had no intention of uh, running across the marks. This is the way I think that, that Abbott mm. came out across. I think it was just a bit of bad luck once again. You have a look at the replay here. Yeah, well... No, silly play. He thought he was off. He was going to try and smother it, wasn't he? You've got to wait for the call, though. You've got to wait for the call. So Nine now... Guys. A nine-point opportunity for Luke Ablett, who Thanks, Lapper. Thanks, one. has played eight games of home and away football, three in the preseason competition, and just kicked the one goal in those three games. And today, this should be his first. Directly in front, 35 metres out for Sydney's second nine-point play. Their first one came from a free kick. And a 50-metre penalty, and the second one does as well. Yes, Bolton got one yep. uh, earlier in the game in the second quarter. So both uh, Sydney 
nine point goals a result of uh, 50 meter penalties down the ground but they'll take them and they're very handy but still they trail by 53 points only his fifth possession for the day uh, Luke Yablett but uh, very very precise there Kevin I just uh, just marked out his whole run up there is no doubt uh, having a bit of problems with uh, kicking his goal so it was a very deliberate uh, walk back and so no doubt been doing a bit of work on that well it, you mentioned before, Matthew, that uh, he only played the eight games last year, but he did play the two finals yeah. games against Port Adelaide and Brisbane. So you would think that those couple of games might be worth an extra dozen to him uh, in uh, normal home and away games. Yep. It's on the line, on the line, on the Whitnell square. took it on the stretch, kicked it whilst going backwards, taken away by Sannington. Maneuvers his way out of trouble to Goods, wants to set up the play. Gets the ball across to Dempster, back to Bevan. Good vision goes wide. Chance for Ablett. Kicking goals at one end. Maybe saving goals at the other. Kept himself in play. Sannington's run hard from half back. Good grab. Good and he's off. Sannington. Loose player. Micklejohn couldn't take it. He was looking for Robert Lewis Thompson as well. Then the handball was intercepted. Taken away by Harford. Taken by Bannister. I reckon he's been okay in defence. For Carlton to Nick Stevens, that beautiful foot skills finds Houlihan. Here comes Favola. Wants it at the back. Now he wants it in the front. Got it. Mark. Came forward. Thanks, ducked great back. Call. And on the second lead, took an absolute daisy cutter. That's something that uh, Favola's really worked on. That's it, you know, his second effort on his lead. Normally you'll just lead once and give it up like some other. The uh, I have seen a Tiger player do that uh, on a couple of occasions the last few years. No names, no pack drills, but uh, really work quite well there. It just keeps presenting. Very handy up forward, this boy. If he really can tie it together and give them something to aim at with that uh, messy mullet, he, uh, <laughs> he is going to be something pretty special this year. 63 goals last year. He's kicked four goals today. Two in the first quarter, one in the second, one in the third. Fairly tight angle. He'll be shooting from 48 metres. He's pushed it right. Through for a behind. 4 5 now for Favola. Just stabbing at that, too. He just didn't, uh, didn't kick out with a lot of confidence. Bolton, no one on the mark, so he's allowed to uh, move off by himself and then chips it to Goods. Needed the Brownlow medalist to be on the end of it as he was under a bit of pressure. Over the top to McVeigh. I see a fair bit of McVeigh, I feel. Lewis Roberts Thompson provides the contest. It's three quarter time here at Telstra Stadium. Carlton led by 27 points at quarter time. They stretched it to 44 at half time. And now they've got that out to 54 at three quarter time. They're in control. We'll take a break from Telstra Stadium. Come back with the final quarter after this.